we are going to fix your kettlebell clean. That's what we're going to do, and uh, welcome to the Daily Strength Live Edition yet again. Um, we're going to have some fun. We're going to take an exercise that people have a lot of trouble with when they start training with kettlebells, and that's the kettlebell clean. I would say that more people often have trouble with their kettlebell clean technique than they even do the kettlebell snatch. Fortunately, the exercises are similar, so if you can get the kettlebell clean technique down, that is, there are elements there and skills there that are going to transfer to, transfer, transfer, transfer to the kettlebell snatch. Lindsay, what's up? Welcome, everybody. Um, so what's new? What's going on? Let me know what you're drinking in the comments. Check this out. Chelsea, how are you? So check this out. Alyssa brought me this peach, but I'm refusing to eat it because there is no way that this peach was not injected with steroids. Look at the size of this thing. It's insane. If I looked this big, if my muscles were this big, people, there's no way that people would say that I'm, that I'm natty. They'd be like, Pat, you're on steroids. This peach is dead. Look, you can see where the syringe went in. Right there. This, she, they're, they're laughing, but it's true. I'm not eating this peach. This is, this is, a, this is a testosterone this peach. This is not. This is a natural water filled from the rains. Yeah. Peach. Yeah, it's like, no, no, I don't take steroids. I just take uh, supplements. Yes, yes. This is all rainwater. No. No. This is ridiculous. You can have your peach back. I'm not eating your poison. Good. Give me my peach back. <laughs> so aside from that peach, all right, so, oh, organic coffee. Lindsay's having organic coffee. Lindsay, we can give you the peach. If Guess what? The peach is the prize today. If you guys guess something or whatever, we'll mail you this, this steroid peach. Raj, coffee, excellent. Uh, Maria, having coffee as well. Everyone's having, is anyone having anything other than coffee? Uh, cappuccino, very good. I have, Lindsay, I have a tomato this morning I picked that is twice that size. Well, you... Uh, I, I don't know what to tell you. I mean, I, what's the average size of a tomato? It's definitely not twice the size of this. So, whatever you... Yeah, GMO tomato. Whatever you gotta do to get ahead. Whatever you have to do to win that, that gardening competition. I get it, you know? That's what power lifters, bodybuilders, the same thing. Uh, Chelsea, how are you? Good. Uh, excellent. Charlotte, how are you? All right, so we're not going to waste too much time. We are going to get right into the meat today, which is fixing your kettlebell clean. Um, the, uh, as far as kettlebell technique goes, this is probably the one that I get asked about the most. Specifically, how do I stop banging my forearm? How do I stop tearing my calluses? Um, some quick callus um, tips, by the way. When you're first training with kettlebells, make sure you keep your calluses filed down. Get a, get a pumice stone or one of those emery boards and... You know, after you take a shower, if you if you shower, if you ever do that, then just kind of file them down and just make sure that don't tear the callus off. Never do that. Just make sure that they're not too callousy, right? Just you don't want them snagging, right? So if they're if they're really grisly, just try and smooth them out so they don't snag on the handle of the bell. Also, make make sure you're using a decent kettlebell. Like make sure it's the the dimensions are appropriate. Make sure that 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 it's not you know. Um, covered in some type of weird substance that is really sticky that will tear your hands apart. So those are important too. And then finally is the technique element which we're going to cover also. Uh, torn calluses are no fun. Um, if, you, if you've ever torn a callus, um, then you know that it can, it can really mess up your training for, for a week or so. Uh, look at my feet, it's insane. All right, you, you, Lindsay, if you want, you can uh, shamelessly promote your tomato and put a link and we'll all look at your gigantic... Um, GMO tomato. Uh, Lulu having water here from Perth. Excellent. Good to have you. Uh, Yozawadi. Sorry if I'm not pronouncing that right. You look like Jason Mraz today. Is that the dude? What is that song that he sings? I'm such like your 80s rock guy. I'm not too hip to the current music, but I think I know who you're talking about. And I think that's a compliment. And if it's not, I'm going to take it as one either way. Um, um, how are you? We have tea, like always at this time. What kind of tea? Caffeinated tea? Herbal tea? Ricardo? What's up? Sean, how are you? Just plain water. That's what I have. Aside from the peach, I've got my Bill Clinton water. And this is Bill Clinton water because this was the only stuff that was good enough for Bill Clinton to drink in the White House. Mountain Valley Spring, folks. Uh, I'm not endorsed by them. I am not a shill for big water. I just like the taste of it. And I'm like, I'm like 3% a water snob. All right, let's go out and let's take a look at the kettlebell clean. So we'll flip this sucker around. Rob and Alyssa are going to help demonstrate. We're going to break the exercise down step by step, and then this will be it. I'll never have to talk about the kettlebell clean again because this will be so good and so thorough and so excellent that there will be no mystery around the movement ever at all again. 
Charlotte, what's up? Vitamin mineral greens with coconut oil and protein. Excellent, delicious. Adam, good morning. How are you? Drinking some coffee out in California. Good to have you. A little bit earlier there than here. I'm in the East Coast. So, um, time is it? I don't even know. It's 10, it's 10 o'clock. Of course it is, because that's when I said I would be doing the Facebook Live. A little bit later now. Jason, what's up? All right, as much as I really do love talking with all of you, and I mean that, I really do, we got to get to business, because this video is going up on YouTube, and people on YouTube, they hate waiting. They, they, they got to get right to the meat, you know. Don't only scroll ahead. All right, let's do it. All right, flip that camera around. Flip it. All right, y'all ready? Yep. All right, so Rob, you're going to demonstrate first. Quit monkeying yeah. around. And let's just show what a proper double kettlebell clean looks like. And then we can, we'll start with double, actually. Because a single kettlebell clean is actually a little more difficult in some ways because of the rotational element. But let's see Rob's clean. There we go. Rob, very deliberate about his setup. Notice the hips are back, not down. So the first thing you want to notice about the double kettlebell clean is it is a hinge movement. It, the pattern is very similar to the swing. There's just a few differences. One, your stance is going to be wider if you're using two bells, and it should be just wide enough to accommodate the bells, but no wider than that. You'll also notice that there's a very smooth transition into the rack. So Rob, you wouldn't mind holding the rack position at the top? So at the finish of the kettlebell clean, here's what we're looking for. The forearms are vertical or very close to. The wrists are straight. So. We don't want that. That's called the broken wrist position. There's, there's a saying, there's no wrists in kettlebells. And the fists are below the chin, Rob's rugged chin. We don't, want it, we don't want to be shrugging up. We want the lats engaged. We want the shoulders down. We want them on their shelf neutral. Long, tall spine. And rest, Rob. Go ahead, take a big rest. So he's already out of breath. You can see just um, how effective this exercise is as a conditioning move. Um, don't worry if you only have one kettlebell. The, the fundamentals are the same here, and we'll, we'll demonstrate with one bell here in a second. Actually, Alyssa, you want to grab one bell? We can, we can use you for this as well. Hello, Pi. How are you? Leon, what is up? So, Rob, whenever you are ready, we'll do another set, and then we'll take right. a look at the single kettlebell clean. So now let's break down some of the nuances. What I want you to focus on when you're watching Rob this set is the trajectory of the kettlebell. So one of the tricky parts with the kettlebell clean is taming the arc. So the kettlebells naturally want to go out, but for the clean, we have to direct them up. So what you'll notice is once the kettlebells get to about hip height, Rob is just, ooh, was that thunder? Rob is just, he's zipping up a coat, right? He's uppercutting the kettlebells, and he's drawing them up his center line. So he's not letting the kettlebells get too far away. Rob, could you, sh you mind showing a few bad reps? Yeah. He's tough, right? That is what we don't want. So that's a wide arc. That is wrong. Somebody put a big red X over that. Now that is right. So do we notice how he tamed the arc? He brought the kettlebells in. Everything is tight and close. Good job, Rob. Thank you. Rest. All right, Alyssa, are you ready? All right. Let's, let's take a look at Alyssa. So the single kettlebell clean. Same fundamental principles. The only difference now is we have to make sure that we're staying square, right? We don't want to over rotate or get the Elvis hip going on. And the Elvis hip is where one hip starts to extend before the other, right? But you'll notice, look, she's keeping the, the arc tame. She's clean. She begins the clean. She initiates the clean really when the kettlebell is at about hip height. If you wait too long, that's when the kettlebell is going to flop over your wrist and smack you on the forearm. So that's the mistake that people make. They wait too long to start punching through the kettlebell. Rob, can we use you again? Yep. We'll make, we'll make Rob do some bad reps again. So Rob, this time let's just throw the timing off. Yeah, so, so, so wait a little too long to clean this time. Okay. I don't want you beat, beating yourself up too much. So just sure. one or two demonstrations will be good. Ooh. Too late. Right? That's way too late. Ooh. Wrong. All right, now zip, zip the bell sooner. So clean to your hip. Think clean to your hip. Boom, right? Notice how tight the kettlebells stay to Rob's body. They're not a perfectly straight line. They never will be perfectly straight. But the arc is pulled in. All right, so the closer we can keep the kettlebells to the body, the more efficient the movement is going to be, and the cleaner... There's, there's a good word to describe the kettlebell clean. The cleaner the exercise is going to look. So I hope that makes 
sense. Alyssa, you want to show a few more reps? Does anyone have any questions on this or issues with the kettlebell swing? The, the other thing we want to be aware of is the grip. So if you grip the kettlebell too tightly, it's going to grind in the palm of the hand, and that's what's going to tear your calluses. So you have to make sure that you're learning how to maintain a relatively loose grip on the kettlebell. So that way the handle can rotate freely around in the hand. Right? If, if you death grip the kettlebell, it's not only going to slow the rotation, but it's going to, it's going to tear your hands up. Oh God, I don't know what the hell that was. That was me gripping it too hard. That was her gripping it too hard. <laughs> don't do that. Don't ever do that. All right, Rob, come back over here. Let's see it one more time. Rob's been doing kettlebells for a long time, pretty much as long as me. Rob, can you show the Elvis hip with one kettlebell? You know what I'm talking one about kettlebell? with that? Yeah. yeah. Somebody asked what the Elvis hip is. Here's the Elvis hip. That's the Elvis hip. So you see the disjointedness where one hip is extending before the other, and he's, he's, he's rotating a bit. Now fix that out. All right, so there. Your hips need to ascend simultaneously. So even though you're using one kettlebell, it should look like you're using two kettlebells. We want to minimize rotation as far as possible when doing single kettlebell work, whether it's cleans, whether it's swings, and Rob just makes it look so delicious. It really does. It's just so delicious. Unlike that terrible peach that we looked at. Trish, how are you? Adam, what about hand position? Center of handle or more towards one side? That's mostly preference. Rob, where are you when you're grabbing the kettlebell? Grabbing the kettlebell, well, on the setup, it's gonna be right here. All right, I like to take a little bit of a hook grip on my fingers here, but when it ends up in the rack position, it's gonna be a little lower on my palm, cutting me almost parallel right to where my uh, wrist meets my hand. So this is, if you, if you do a lot of work on gymnastic rings, you'll notice this is pretty much the same angle that the rings cut in a false grip, and then pushing really hard into the base of Rob's palm right here. This is, and this is gonna help keep the wrist, this is where you don't wanna be, right? This is a weak, broken wrist position. This is where you want to land in your kettlebell clean. So notice it's angle, right? And then, Rob, let's show what it looks like in the hook grip when you're sure. swinging it. So when he's swinging it, it's going to be more, let's turn it this way, right? In the crook of his fingers. So this is where you want to swing the kettlebell. But when you catch it, it's going to land here. So you can imagine in both the swing and the clean that the kettlebell has to jump, right? It has to jump, open your hand. It has to jump from here to here. And the only way you can make this jump and spare this part, right? This is the part we want to spare because mm -hmm. that's, that's what's going to get caught with the handle is you have to learn to keep a loose grip so the kettlebell can jump from here to here. Let's see a few reps. All right. Two with a really tight grip. So it would look like this yeah. if I did that. Don't do this, mm. right? Ow. And you'll notice one trick that you can use to get the hang of this is you can open your hand on the way up. You can spear through the kettlebell to learn how to loosen that grip and jump the handle from those fingers to the palm. And then you can keep your, once you, once you really own that, you can keep your hand closed. It really doesn't matter. That's a good question, Adam. Is that little twist that Lista makes okay to do? Um, so the Elvis hip, the answer is a little bit it's okay. We just want to minimize it as, as much as, as possible. So what we're really trying to fight with the, with the single arm kettlebell work, whether it's the clean, the snatch, or the swing, is rotation, right? This should be mostly an anti-rotational exercise. What else, Rob? What are we missing for the, for the clean? Can you think of anything else? No, I think that's pretty much it. Did we, were we... As thorough as we could be, I just want to be as I thorough. I think so. You know? I think so. Because this is it. There's never going to be another kettlebell clean tutorial again. This is <laughs> this is the kettlebell clean tutorial to end all kettlebell clean tutorials. So let's bring it back in, and we'll, you two you two kids can go back to playing whatever you were playing before. And I'm going to come. I'm going to have some final words here. Alrighty. So I hope that was helpful, folks. If it was, uh, please do like this video, please do share it. Um, I want to start breaking down more of the double kettlebell exercises. I've done so much with single kettlebell techniques over the year that I think it's, I think it's fine, I think it's fair, and it's appropriate if we start talking about the 
the double kettlebells a little bit. And my God, this, this is like a 20 kilogram peach. I kid you not. Um, so we'll do, uh, be sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel too. I'll post another link there because I'm going to have little short condensed versions of the double kettlebell technique just for quick reference. So we've got the clean, we've got front squat, we've got double swing, we've got double snatch, we've got double press, we've got seesaw press, we've got deadlift, we've got asymmetrical. There's, there's a ton that you can do with, with just two kettlebells. Um, what else? Is that it? What's everyone doing? What's everyone doing over the weekend? Tell me if does anyone have any cool weekend plans? Let me know what you're doing in, in the comments really quick. I am. What am I doing? I'm going for. A, well, I'm doing podcasts a lot this weekend. I've been doing a lot of podcasts recently. I will be. I went to a winery yesterday, so I had that. That was fun. And um, today, I think we are going to take a walk around town. And I think the kids have expressed interest in getting gelato, but of course they have. Why would, why would kids not want to go out and get gelato? So what are you doing this weekend? Anything cool, exciting going on? Um, Raj says, if I start with double, should I start with half the weight? Um, no, not necessarily. I would start with the weight that you're challenged with, but can be successful with. So if you usually use 16 kilogram, you might start with two eight kilogram. I don't think that's, that's bad, but you might be able to do two twelve also. Challenge, but successful. You don't want to go so light that you can mask bad technique. And that's something that does happen. Sometimes you can go so light that you can get away with, with cheating certain parts of the exercise. But you don't want to go so heavy that it's impossible either. So experiment, do a few reps. Um, and remember, when you're practicing technique, keep the reps keep the reps low, right? So just treat it like true practice, like you're running scales on a guitar or something like that. You don't need to just try and totally punish yourself. What is, uh, Adam says, what is the general rule of thumb for converting double kettlebell exercises, single kettlebell? Oh, so it's the same question, essentially. Same weight, but double the reps? No, it, so for practice, it, it was what I just said. Just pick a weight that you can be challenged but successful with. In execution, it depends on the workout. What are you going for with the workout? Are you going for more strength and power? Are you going for more muscle endurance? So we would need some more context to, to answer that. Double kettlebells generally are more useful for heavier stuff. That's... That, I mean, I think that's a given, right? Because you're using two kettlebells, you can use more load, more intensity, so more strength and power-based movements. Or a single kettlebell is, is generally more useful for more endurance work, more aerobic capacity, more muscular endurance, mobility, things like that. So both are really great tools. You should learn both and use both. Why is the lighting so bad in here? Is it just much better out there? I feel like I'm, uh, darkness is consuming me. Rock on, Pat. Thanks for all the great double kettlebell info. My pleasure, Darren. Thank you for joining in. Lindsay has a 10-mile run tomorrow, so that's not fun. That's not fun at all. Why would you ever do that? Uh, Raj, it's my birthday today. Happy birthday to you. 46, doing a movie and dinner. Well, you know what? We'll do 46 swings for you I when, we're, when I'm done with this. We'll knock that out. And I hope you give yourself a 46-swing salute as well. Sean says, I've noticed that with kettlebells, unlike weights, it becomes harder to maintain good form with a weight that's too light. Is that the norm? Yeah, so that's exactly what I just talked about. Um, for example... If you're doing too light with swings or cleans, you can, you can delt raise the kettlebell, and that's exactly what you don't want to do. The swing is not a delt raise. You want to be forced to use the lower body to power the movement. So if you're going way too light, it, you could just be doing that. Even, even if it looks like you're doing it right, it, the, you, know, you could be powering the exercise completely wrong. Same thing with cleans. If it's too light, you can just curl the kettlebell. The clean is not a curl, right? The hips are the engine and the arms are the steering wheel. The arms aren't doing anything but directing the trajectory of the kettlebell. So if it's too light, which this peach is not, then uh, you can get away with distorting the movement. Uh, and, but you have to be careful because if it's too heavy, then you can get hurt. So pick a weight, again, that is going to challenge you but allow you to be successful to really nail the technique. Uh, this weekend, we are celebrating my sister's birthday who died in September. I'm very sorry to hear that, but good. I'm happy to hear that you're honoring her. Um, Adam says, I'm heading up to the Sierra foothills, uh, to Shaver Lake. That sounds like a fine way to spend your weekend. I hope you get in some great hiking and see some terrific views. Chelsea says, refinishing doors, working at the hospital next week, though. The strong first body weight course. Good. Get your one-arm push-ups going. One of my favorite exercises, one-arm push-ups and pistol squats. The absolute minimalist body weight routine. I think you're going to have a lot of fun there. Raj, thank you, as always. And Derek... Crab Buffet at uh, Orioles Affiliate Baseball Game. Well, 
Well, I guess my invite got lost in the mail, but I hope you have a fantastic time. Folks, that's all that we have time for today. So I hope this tutorial was helpful. I'll be posting the replay as usual. I'll also be posting a few condensed versions on YouTube. This has been The Daily Strength, and we will see you on the next episode.